Hey friends, this is Tanya and you're watching She's At It Again. So I'm not sure why my husband's home early. I thought I had another hour to make dinner and um, he decided to skip going to the gym. So anyway, he's home, he's in there talking. So if you're talking in the background, he's just answering phone calls. And uh, again, I, I, I don't know why he's home. That phone rang as soon as he walked in the door and I didn't have a chance to ask him. So anyway, we're gonna go in there. We're gonna make some shrimp and grits. I wanna show you how to do that. Go along with me as we make a really, really good creamy seafood dish. I think you're gonna enjoy this. If you're anywhere of a shrimp lover like I am, you're gonna love this. The key to it is to buy wild caught shrimp. It's gonna have the best flavor. It's of course better nutritionally. I, that kind of goes without saying. It's not been farm raised and fed things that shrimp don't usually eat, whatever that might be. Um, but anyway, these are, I believe, gulf caught, and these are fresh shrimp, so I've got them draining right now. So we're gonna go in the kitchen. Not a lot of uh, face shots. This is just gonna be of the food. I'm gonna try to set up the camera where it'll be right on the stove top. So um, it goes together pretty quick. It doesn't take too long, maybe 25 or 30 minutes in all. So I think you're gonna enjoy this, so stay tuned. All right, so I have three pans going right here. This back burner has lima beans in it. So they're just gonna be cooking. They're just frozen lima beans. And I put some ghee, which is rendered butter fat in there. And that's all that it has in that for right now. I'll add salt to it later on. So this saucepan, it, if you'll notice, it's not a super small saucepan. It's more like a medium to large saucepan. And in this, I have 14 ounces of homemade chicken stock or bone broth, that actually is what it is, chicken bone broth, with a cup of milk and a half a teaspoon of salt. So we're gonna bring that up to a boil, and this is what we're gonna cook our cheese grits in. The other skillet is what we're gonna cook our shrimp in. And it's, the recipe calls for, which is my recipe, it calls for t cooking two bacon slices, but as you know, I've said in earlier videos, I cook my bacon ahead of time and it stays in my lower oven. So I have uh, a few pieces of bacon in there and what I'm gonna do is just crisp those up a bit, set those aside, and then I have bacon grease that I save in this jar. This is normally in my refrigerator, so I just have this and I'm gonna add the bacon grease to the skillet because that's what we're going to saute our shrimp in.
Now the shrimp itself will only take maybe, oh, maybe, maybe eight to 10 minutes or so. And the grits themselves will take about 20 minutes um, just to get them cooked once it comes to a boil. So this is gonna take a little bit longer. That's why I'm not really that worried about getting everything going in that skillet yet. So mainly we're just waiting for this to come to a boil and we'll put our grits in it. And these are uncooked grits. These are raw grits you can just see by that. It looks like uh, chicken food. Yeah, that's what it looks like, chicken food. Let's see if I can get a look at it in there. So we have a cup of raw organic grits. If you don't buy organic, um, I can pretty much say with a relative amount of confidence that it's going to be genetically modified. So if, uh, if given the choice, always go for organic when you're buying corn products. This bacon would be fine actually. I'm only crisping it up because it says to crumble it over the top of your servings. And it is really good. It does have a lot of flavor to it, but it's not gonna be a deal breaker if it's just kind of floppy and you tear it in little pieces and put over your shrimp and grits. It will still be good. So this is actually shrimp and cheese grits. It's not just grits, it's cheese grits. So we have cheddar and we have fresh grated Parmesan. Well, fresh grated cheddar and fresh grated Parmesan in this both. So combination of cheeses there that's really, really good. All right, this has almost come to a boil. Okay, our chicken broth and milk has come to a boil and, and the salt as well. And we're gonna whisk the grits in there. going to reduce this heat to low. Put a lid on it. I need to keep an eye on it too because I love having things boil over apparently because I do it a lot. And we'll focus more on this. So while our bacon is crisping, I'm going to take my shrimp put some salt and pepper over it. I have this little strainer basket here inside this bowl so I can get most of the water drained off of it. So about an, uh, about an eighth of a teaspoon of salt, really not much at all. about a fourth of a teaspoon of pepper. We're gonna put about a fourth of a cup of flour in a bowl dredge our shrimp in that. I think our bacon is crisped up enough to put in that little container. I'll turn that burner down a little bit. I don't need it that hot. Okay, we're going to put our bacon grease in there so we'll be in the same situation as if we had just cooked our bacon in this skillet. Kind of get that shrimp coated lightly with the flour. 
not a heavy coating, just to where it's covered up. Okay, did not want my fingers smelling like shrimp, so I had to wash that off. Okay, we're gonna put our shrimp in here. Now, shrimp cooks really fast. I've said that before, but most of y'all probably know that if you've ever cooked shrimp before, it doesn't take a long time at all. All right, so we're gonna put our We have some garlic here. We're gonna put that in there on the right spoon. We're gonna put about two cloves of garlic in with this shrimp, not directly in the skillet, that would pop like crazy. We're also gonna put, um, I'm trying to read my recipe as I go along. We have our cup of mushrooms and a half a cup of chopped green onions. So we're going to put our shrimp in there. Let this saute for just a couple of minutes. over here behind the camera measuring out a cup of more chicken bone broth to add to the skillet. And to this broth, I'm going to add I think two tablespoons of lemon juice. So here's my lemon juice. Not from concentrate, just pure lemon juice. Really seems like a lot of lemon juice, but it does add a really bright flavor to it. It's really nice. just a little bit of hot sauce. You recognize this as my bottle of Frank's hot sauce because I buy it by the gallon. So I just put it in a repurposed mustard bottle. Recipe calls for half a teaspoon, but just a little squirt. We'll be fine.
Okay, give my grits a stir. Okay, turn our heat down to about medium. Of course, with the bigger burner, you could have the same temperature. If it's a medium heat on a big burner, it's just gonna be hotter than if it's medium heat on a small burner. That's just the way it goes. Okay, pour this over your shrimp. And that steam is really going to speed up the cooking on that shrimp too. So it's not going to have a sear on the outside once you pour the liquid in there. So you got to get it seared before the liquid goes in. The flour on the outside is going to make a nice thick sauce for this. So that's why we have the flour. If you needed to make it gluten free, you could always use a really fine rice flour or uh, just lightly coated in cornstarch. You wouldn't want to use a whole lot of cornstarch because it has like at least twice the strength of flour when it comes to thickening. Okay, so basically this is all we're gonna do to this. We're just gonna wait for this shrimp to cook completely. It'll all turn pink and that'll be done. And we're just going to wait for our grits to cook and then we'll add a little bit of hot sauce and our cheese to that and a little bit of pepper and that will be done. So in this cup we have our supposedly three-fourths of a cup of cheddar and a fourth cup of parmesan but I overdid it on the cheddar and I'm not upset in the least bit about that so just can't have too much cheese. When you're cooking the shrimp in the liquid like this, if you'll take your spoon or spatula, whatever you're using, and scrape those cooked bits off the bottom, that's where a lot of that flavor comes from too. And they're pretty easy to come up. It also leaves you with a clean skillet when it's time to wash dishes. Okay, I'm going to turn the burner off on that, and that'll just stay warm. It's just hard to gauge when things need to come out exactly the same time as to how early to start the one that's supposed to cook the longest, so we'll just keep cooking it until it's done.
at this point when you're cooking this these grits it smells like corn tortillas because that's kind of what it is except it's not masa it's just corn grits which how many grits maybe that would be they would be next to malaise yeah i guess it'd be the same thing i don't know Like flickering above me, so it's throwing me for a loop. Okay, I need to test the texture of this. Almost done, but not quite. Stir in our cheese now. Actually, I'm going to put my hot sauce in first. A little bit of hot sauce and just a tiny bit of black pepper. Maybe two pinches. burner off at that point. The finer the grind of your grits, the quicker they're going to cook. And these are not real finely ground. They were just a good quality grits that we found, so they needed to cook a little while longer. Pretty well. Okay, I'll plate this up for right now. Of course, I'd drop it on the side of the plate. Unless you think I forgot. I didn't. 